well, let's start with a, uh, a discussion of why it's so expensive to compress a gas. To understand that, you go back and you look at a pressure volume diagram, okay? And if I have an ideal gas, it's a very large specific volume. And if I want to go from this pressure to that pressure, a specified pressure ratio, I compress it. Typically, I compress it. S is equal to a constant isentropically, and I'm up there. Boom. All right. This is an open system, so we're flowing through a control volume. That's the compressor. And we're coming in at state 1, state 1. We're going out at state 2, state 2 over here. And the goal is for the pressure at 2 to be high. Well, we worked out that you have to supply the work per unit mass, or W dot per M dot, work per unit mass, is equal to the integral of V dP. Now, there's a minus sign, because it's, but I'm going to ignore that minus sign. But it's the magnitude of the integral V dP. As a review, you take a look from calculus, and you knew how to integrate F as a function of X. You start from X of A, you go to X of B, you have some curve like that, it's the area under the curve. That's the integral, integral of F dx, some value for that integral. Well, here, this always throws students for a loop because what's on the x-axis? V. What's on the y-axis? P. So what they're doing is integrating dp to help make it make sense. Let me do a flip. Let me put P in the traditional X location, and let me put V in the traditional Y location. And now let's see if we can figure this out. So we start with high, at state one, it's large V, low P. There's state one. And we're going to low V, high P, there's state two. So there is our curve flipped, okay. And what we're interested in is the area under the curve, okay? And that's a mag that that's a, a visual representation of the work. Let me try and draw it like this: D lowercase w, the work per unit mass, the area under the curve. If I now have a liquid, a liquid, and the liquid specific volume of the liquid compared to the specific volume of an ideal gas. How, what, is one really large and one really small? So it's the volume occupied by a kilogram of liquid compared to the volume occupied by a kilogram of an ideal gas. Well, the volume occupied by a kilogram of liquid is much, much smaller than a volume occupied by a kilogram of ideal gas. So way down here, you may have the specific volume of a liquid. And let's say it starts at this pressure. And if I want to boost the pressure, like in a pump, it's not going to compress it, but I'll have a pressure increase. So if I compare a pump, right, and I come in like this, this is now a pump, this was a compressor, and I'm undergoing the same pressure change. What I find is that work per unit mass of the pump is really small. So the work per unit mass of the pump is much smaller than the work per unit mass of a compressor. So, so um, you can see it here as well, but when you leave it in the traditional PV diagram, it's not the area under the curve, it's the area to the left. I don't see too many applications where you're looking at areas to the left of the curve, but there it is. And, uh, and so you see that this work is large and this work is small for the pump. This is for the compressor right here, this work of the compressor. So as a clever engineer, you say, running that compressor is very expensive. How can I reduce that work? 
Well, this is if you had it compressed, ideal gas compressed isentropically. If you could compress it where the temperature doesn't change, where the temperature is constant, it actually would come out with a lower temperature at this temp at, at state two. It would achieve the same pressure, but it would be lower because this temperature, um, let's say you this this is temperature two would equal to the temperature one if it was actually compressed isothermally. Um, this temperature T2S is greater than T1. So the goal would be, oh, well, if you cool it as you're compressing it, it would be require less work. But to have that a device, usually a heat exchanger is a poor compressor, and a, poor, a compressor is not a very good heat exchanger. So what they do is they say, let's do it in stages. We'll compress to this pressure level. We'll do it isentropically and then stop. Then we'll cool it back to the temperature of state one, and then we'll compress it isentropically. And so this is now the amount of that shaded area is a visual representation of the work saved by having two stages of a compressor, stage one and stage two, and in between, cooling. So in between, right here, you have an intercooler. Intercooler. Okay?